Good morning, everybody, or good afternoon, or good evening, or good night, depending on what time you're watching this. It is 3.43 in the morning. It is Tuesday, April 11th, 2023. Okay, so this is a picture of Theodore Roosevelt. Okay. Random house paperbacks. To my mother and father. Okay. Prologue. 14 to 16 September 1901. Saturday. Theodore Roosevelt became president of the United States without knowing it. At 2.15 in the morning of 14 September 1901, he was bouncing in a buckboard down the rain-swept slopes of Mount Marcy in the Adriatic's constitutionally not so much as a heartbeat impeded the flow of power from the assassinated predecessor to himself. Practically more than 400 miles of mud and rails still separated him from William McKinley's death chamber in Buffalo, where pre-preparations for an emergency inauguration were already underway. For all Roosevelt knew, he was still vice president, yet he already realized that he would soon assume supreme responsibility. Yesterday's telegrams relayed up the mountain by telephone operators, writers, and runners had documented the spread of gangrene through his bullet-ridden chief. The president is critically ill. His condition is grave. Oxygen is being given. Absolutely no hope. The last telegram to reach Roosevelt's va vacation cabin in Upper Tahawas had been urgent enough to banish all thought of waiting for clear weather. The president appears to be dying, and members of the cabinet in Buffalo think you should lose no time coming. So shortly before midnight, he had kissed his wife and children goodbye and begun the descent to North Creek Station, at least a seven-hour drive, even by day. He was now at the moment of the ascension, halfway through the second stage of this journey, some five miles north of Aden Lair Lodge, where a new wagon and fresh horses awaited him. He sat alone on the passenger seat, shrouded against splashes of mud in a borrowed raincoat several sizes too big. His favorite hat, a broad brim slouch pulled well over his ears, kept some of the drizzle off his spectacles. Not that he could see anything beyond the buckboard's tossing circle of lamplight, nor had he much to say, since leaving Lower Tahawas, indeed, he had spoken hardly a word to the lanky youth in front of him. From time to time, he muttered to himself, Sincere, if slight, grief for McKinley, a cold-blooded politician, he had never much cared for, struggled in Roosevelt's breast with more violent emotions regarding the assassin, Leon Kozologus. In his opinion, those bullets at Buffalo had been fired not merely at a man, but at the very heart of the American Republic. They were an assault upon representative government and civilized order. Unable to contain his rage, he leaned forward and blurted an ex ex exoration of Siligios into the rain. If it had been I who had been shot, he wouldn't have got away so easily. I'd have guzzled him first. Okay, so that's all for our part one. Chapter 1, Theodore Rex. Prologue.
Thank you for watching.